so hello everyone again and welcome to my last part of my talk and uh, we have supposed to talk about the COVID-19 pandemic and associated concerns yes with reference to genosis okay so you know coronaviruses coronavirus disease in short what we call COVID-19 caused by SARS coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 or SARS coronavirus 2 has taken you know humanity by surprise with numerous unprecedented effects on human existence all over the world this genetic pandemic is proving to be one of the most damaging disease outbreak in this decade or rather in the century one metrological factor along with population density health pollutions and living conditions particularly in urban and semi-urban areas have been shown in research and data analysis particularly in relation to COVID-19 to play a critical role in the intensity evolution and the spread of SARS-CoV-2 and we have discussed all of these factors in detail in our previous six although this virus is new coronaviruses have a lengthy history and have been linked to illness epidemics in the past as well more than 243 million verified covid 19 illnesses and about 5 million covid 19 attributable fatalities have been documented globally uh what that i'm telling you as of october 25 2020 okay so despite significant advances in vaccine research and delivery many nations continue to see high transmission rates and resurgence with a new sars cov 2 strain emerging even presently again this has been emerged in shanghai and all and people think that maybe the next wave will maybe affect the asia and other countries asian countries and other places people participate in activities that promote deforestation and wild life trading to sustain their livelihoods for a variety of reasons including financial cultural and variety of other causes and this creates a positive feedback loop it raises the possibility of future genotic diseases spillover occurrence and public health disasters covid 19 was originally identified in december 2019 in wuhan china's dubai region where dozens of patients were hospitalized with pneumonia like symptoms caused by unexplained reasons preliminary testing and epidemiological uh, research later revealed that COVID-19 was caused by novel genotic coronavirus strain known as severe acute respiratory syndrome SARS uh, 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 coronavirus 2. The first COVID-19 patients are thought to be linked to a seafood market in Wuhan known for selling fresh seafood as well as on-site slaughter of any uh, wild animals okay so according to the report uh wild uh, animals might be pre-human host of uh, sars cov 2 okay so previous research uh, uh, have so has shown that wild animals such as a horseshoe bat bat uh, uh can serve as a natural and uh, intermediate host for coronaviruses that are phylogenetically related to SARS-CoV. According to the phylogenetic techniques, the virus's genesis uh, might be uh, as early uh, as the first part of September 2019. Okay. Uh, another notion surfaced that Wuhan Center of Disease Prevention and Control, located near 
uh, 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 Hunan market and renowned, uh, uh, you know, renowned for hosting numerous bat carrying coronaviruses. Maybe possible pathway for the viruses escape from the facility. However, certain key genetic traits binding to this human receptor ACE2 and a structure of the spike protein indicate that virus most likely developed from similar SARS-CoV like coronaviruses and was spread naturally. We already know the current research backs this up. That the major infection source of SARS-CoV-2 is respiratory droplets transmitted through human-to-human -human contact. Apart from this, asymptomatic disease, asymptomatic cases, and a fecal and oral transmission are also reported to be involved in the transmission of this COVID-19. According to genomic studies. Coronavirus genetically clusters with genus beta coronaviruses in subgenus Starbe covirus, that is lineage B, together with two bat derived variant. Okay, so at the complete genome level, it is 96% similar to the previous bat coronavirus strain, that is uh, SARS CoV 2. Uh, uh, previous coronavirus strain and this SARS-CoV-2 structural protein include membrane glycoprotein, envelope protein, nucleocapsid protein and spike protein. The M protein that's called glycoprotein of SARS-CoV-2 is approximately 98% similar to the M protein of bat SARS-CoV-2 and approximately 98% similar to pangolin SARS-CoV and approximately 90% similar to M protein of SARS-CoV-2, SARS-CoV, the older one. However, the similarity with M protein of MERS-CoV-2, COV, is only approximately percent. So, the COVID-19 symptoms vary ranging from minor to serious and potentially lethal sickness. Coughing, fever, loss of smell, tastes are frequent symptoms with less common ones including headaches, nasal congestions and running, runny nose, muscular sore, uh, you know, soreness, sore throat, diarrhea, uh, Eye irritations and toes, toes swelling or uh, turning purple, as well as you know, breathing difficulties in moderate to severe cases. People infected with COVID 19 may experience a variety of symptoms which may change over time, also. There are three frequent clusters of symptoms. One respiratory symptoms cluster with cough, sputum, shortness of breath, and fever. One musculoskeletal symptoms cluster with muscle and joint pain, headache, and you know, exhaustion. And one digestive symptom cluster with stomach discomfort, vomiting, and diarrhea. So these are three you know, a uh, cluster of the symptoms. To diagnose the condition, several diagnostic procedures have been established so far, right? The conventional diagnostic procedures is to identify the virus's nucleic acid in a nasopharyngeal swab using real-time reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction, in short, what we call RT-PCR test, or transcription-mediated amplification TMA, or reverse transcription loop mediated isothermal amplification that is RT lamp. So these are uh, three uh, methods which is you know generally used for the detection of this. So the COVID-19 pandemic basically demonstrates how genetic spillover events 
may swiftly escalate into a costly worldwide problem, affecting a wide range of health, social, economic, and environmental variables. Okay? We have already addressed numerous studies and methods that will aid in the control of genetic illness. However, there is another alternative option that may not help directly but will undoubtedly add in the prevention of disease such as COVID-19. These steps are critical in order to avoid feedback loop that might lead to you know establishment of future genetic disease and possibly pandemics. Number one, restoration and resilience of natural capitals and ecosystem services. Number two, clean environment, clean energy infrastructures. Number three, efficiency re, uh, retrofits for buildings. Number four, clean technology research and development. And number five, education and training to address COVID-19 related unemployment and decarbonization shifts. Addressing global COVID-19 related unemployment is an opportunity to provide novel jobs in transition towards U.S. Sustainable Development Goal with a minimum additional economic disruptions. Okay, so you know the uh, several uh, uh, several COVID nineteen vaccines have been licensed and delivered in the nations that have begun mass immunization effects, efforts, right? The Central Drug Standard Control Organization in India issued emergency use authorization to Covishield, Covax, and Covaxins. Physical or social separation, quarantining, ventilation of interior areas, covering, uh, you know, cough and, you know, sneezes, uh, hand washing, and keeping unclean hand away from the face are all prophylactic method. Okay. In public places, the use of face masks or covers have been advocated to reduce the risk of transmission. While research is being conducted to create medications that would block virus, the primary therapy is symptomatic. Okay. So treatment of symptoms, supportive care, seclusions and experimental techniques are all a part of management so in the last section we looked at all we look at all the fields that would help us learn more about covid 9 the sections this section's takeaway message is to exercise prudence and contribute to construction of brighter future for ourselves and our loved ones. Okay, so I, after that, I must because I have also published many paper, papers on this area of COVID nineteen, which I have not mentioned here. But I must acknowledge my mentors, my collaborators and my dear students who have helped me to you know study in this area of COVID-19 and other portrait of my research that is human health usually work on. So with the last I must thank all my research students and yes but we have to say that you know we can't solve our problem with the same thinking used when we created that. Thank you so much for your patience. I hope it will be fruitful to you. Thank you.